Good morning and welcome to the uh, second tutorial on the APIC Enterprise Module REST API, the controller for CAPS and RAM. Um, this tutorial is going to look at the concept of tags and locations. So you'll remember from the previous uh, tutorial, we looked at the overview of the controller. Uh, and one of the things that the, the controller had was this concept of topology. Um, tags are a way of identifying devices in the topology. And tags will be useful later on because they're a way of restricting the scope where a policy is applied to the, the network. So in this particular example, um, if I take a look at the, the controller, look at my topology, I've got two devices that are labeled core here. And if I search for the core devices, you'll see that those two devices are highlighted and have been identified as, as core devices. And the reason that's important is that I can then take that concept and apply that or use those, those tags to restrict the, the scope with which a policy will be applied. And you can imagine in a, a large network where you have lots of uh, devices, um, you know, tracking those devices and identifying devices uh, would be a useful thing. Devices can have multiple tags. Um, and this very simple example, I'm just going to show you how through the API you can add a, a tag to a, a device. Um, it's interesting to note that you know, given that the controller runs a, a model of the network, a lot of the basic get operations you could run on a controller that didn't have real network devices uh, behind it, so it was a model of the network. Um, tags can be implemented on that type of controller as well. So if some people in their demo environments just have a virtual machine running uh, a database, and uh, if you want to test this out with, the, uh, with that type of controller, then that will work, or that the controller running in that mode, this will work as well. Uh, in order to do that, um, what we're going to do is we're going to create a, a tag. And remember from the first tutorial I said that the post uh, action or post verb is asynchronous. So what's going to happen is when I um, create a, a network device tag, um, what's going to happen is that's going to be an asynchronous operation. Uh, if I take a look at the, the documentation on the controller, and go into network device uh, tag and look at network device slash tag. Uh, you'll see that I can create a network device tag through a post. And essentially all I need to do um, to, to do that is I need to put in um, an identifier or a tag and a network device ID. So really I only need to have two things to to define a network device tag. Uh, the, other, the other things are optional. You can apply tags through interfaces, links, um, and locations. But in this particular case, I'm going to apply a tag to a network device. Uh, in order to do that, um, I'm going to use the post uh, URL, oh, sorry, the post action. Um, I'm going to use Postman. Um, well, actually, no, I won't. I'll, uh, I'll do that basically straight out of the, the, uh, the Swagger documentation. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a tag called branch to the network device ID that is uh, this particular string. And that's going to correspond to uh, this device um, on the far, far right-hand side, which is a, a 3750. Um, as we mentioned before, every device has an ID. And in this particular case, I'm going to use this particular network device um, ID and apply that particular tag branch to that particular device. So if I go into um, post, I uh, say Swagger, and I want to try that out, then I can do that. And you'll notice that I get a a response back straight away. And my response code is 202, which means in progress. And essentially, what I get is a task ID. So this is an asynchronous process. Um, if I wanted to find out uh, the status of that task, I would just get this particular resource, which would be the information about that particular task. So the task ID is, is the same as, as being provided in the URL. So if I take this URL, and if I was to put that into Postman, for example, and if I was to put it in here, um, then what I would get back is I would get back the status of that particular task. So you can see that it was the inventory service that was uh, being used. And the progress is that the network device 
tag has been successfully added to this particular um, network device ID. And if you want to find out what network device that is, because we knew um, that that was going to be the 3750, I could look that up just to verify that. Network dash device. And if I send that, uh, you'll see that that is in fact that branch 38, uh, sorry, 3750 stack, um, which is on the, the far right hand side. So if I come back to, to topology now, you'll notice that when I go and look at the tags that exist, so there's a branch tag, and you notice that that happens to um, identify that particular 38, 3750 stack device down there. So very simple to create a, a tag, um, very easy to do. If, uh, if I want to delete a tag, um, I can do that through, again, a URL, URI, where I take the network device ID, and then the tag, and then this is the identifier of the tag. So I'm going to need to know um, what identifier that was. Um, and again, I can find that out. So if I was to um, get network device slash tag, that would show me all of the network devices and tags that existed. So you can see that the ID of uh, the core tag is E46. Um, and that's been applied to this particular network device, which is one of the CAT6Ks, as well as this particular network device. This uh, tag ID of branch, um, which is 9FB, is a new one that I've created. And that's the thing that's been applied to um, uh, this particular device. So in my example here, I can't just take this string. Um, the reason that I can't take this is that uh, this is one I, I created earlier. And while the network device ID will be the same, the ID of the tag won't be because it's just been created. So if I wanted to delete that particular tag, I would take um, network device slash the ID. Uh, and then what I would do is I would um, just substitute the, the new uh, tag ID. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually start another Postman window. Um, Postman is just an app that you can get from Google. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put that particular URI in. So I now need my, that tag ID. Um, the tag ID is going to be this particular string here for branch. So I take that, paste that, and then I do a delete. And again, what I'm going to get back here is I'm going to get back a task, which I have got. And if I want to find out whether that task has been successful or not, it's quite a simple process. I just take a look at that particular task. And oh, I don't want to delete the task, obviously. I actually want to get the task. Uh, and you can see that the tag has been successfully delete, deleted. So if I go back to the topology now, um, refresh the topology, uh, you'll notice now that if I try and find that, that um, branch tag, it's no longer there. So a very simple example of how you can apply and delete tags. Um, you can do a similar thing with locations. Uh, the controller has a database of locations. If I want to grab the list of locations that are currently defined on the the controller, I can do that very easily. Um, that's a get request. And you notice that I have a couple of locations that are defined here. So the old head office, old corporate office, um, and now the new head office. Um, so those locations have been defined. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up a new location. Um, I'm going to do uh, create that location, which is a civic address, a geographic address, and a location name. Uh, those are just strings. And these locations are going to be used in some other applications. So some of the pass trace stuff that we're, we're looking to do, some of the policy things we're looking to do will take the concept of location. Um, I'm going to create this location. Uh, and it's going to be a similar sort of thing that I've done in the past. Um, I'm going to use Postman to do that. So it's going to be a post is what I need to do. Um, and I need to put in some data. So this is where the JSON syntax comes into play. So I have 
three attributes, civic address, which is branch office, geographic address, which is Wollongong, Australia, location name is Wollongong, head office, or yeah, which is what I've defined. So I'm going to put that in. Um, trust me that that's uh, been successful because when I go and get a list of locations, you're going to see that there is a new location that has been added, uh, and that is Wollongong. Um, I'm now going to uh, modify that, so I'm going to do a put, uh, because that is what allows me to, to modify that ID. And it wasn't actually meant to be Wollongong head office, it was meant to be Wollongong branch office, because I said it was a branch. So I need to change that civic address um, uh, attribute. Um, again, what I need to do is to take into account the ID. Um, that's going to be different in this particular case, so I'm going to need to remember that identifier. So that will correspond to this particular ID, and then I can change any of these, these attributes if I want to. One of the easiest ways of doing that is just to, to copy that, um, and then instead of making that a post, make it a put. And what I'm able to do now is just paste that in. The attributes that I want to change, I can change, and I can just leave the other ones there. So I want to change that as well, branch office, and I'm going to change that to branch. I can change multiple things. Um, I should be able to send that. And if I was to do a get, rather than looking at the task, I should be able to see that. You can see that those attributes have been updated. Um, the next question is, you know, how do I apply a location to a network device? I've defined the location. Um, now I need to apply it to a device. Again, that's fairly easy to do. I can update the network device because essentially what I'm going to do is add an attribute. Um, this is the particular ID of the network device I want to add, and then the location um, attribute will be different in this case to the example that I have here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Postman again, and I'm going to uh, make a change to network device. Um, that's going to be a put. So I'm making a change to an attribute. I need to access the data. Now just one thing when you're doing a put, you need to make sure that, or a post, you need to make sure that you set the content type to the application JSON. That's done through the header parameter. And you need to make sure that you enter the data in a raw format or raw syntax. So I'm going to take um, oops, I'm going to take this particular ID. Um, and instead of having, I won't need to specify the location because that's going to change. But what I'm going to do is make sure the syntax matches. But I'm going to take this identifier for this particular um, location and add that to a particular network device. So I put that in, I send that off, uh, you notice I get a task back and if I was to have a look at what that task returned, uh, get that, you notice that um, I've successfully updated that particular network device. If I wanted to find out well, I already knew which network device it was because that's why I used the identifier, but just to verify that particular network device, um, if I get that, you can see that that's the branch 3750 stack. So essentially what I've done is added that, that location information to that stack. Um, if I want to remove location from a particular device, I just put an empty location, and once I do that, I can then remove the location itself. So the important thing is that I can't remove the location until I uh, or have it unassigned from network devices. Once I've done that, I can remove that location. So those are just some simple examples of how you can use the location and tagging APIs. Um, the nice thing about these is they can be automated. So if you've got existing um, databases for assets, you can incorporate that information in or use the, the controller as a, a single source of truth for your network in information um, databases. So this is just a summary of the, the types of attributes you can look at. Network device slash tag, you can get, post, delete. Um, location, you can get, post. Um, you can also put, 
location if you need to change it. Um, and if you want to assign a location to a network device, you put it and then you can get it um, to see the network devices in location. So if I do a, a network device slash, slash location, uh, that will show me the network devices that have a location assigned to them, and there's just one. So even though I have multiple locations in the database, there's only one that's actually being assigned right now. So hopefully that gives you uh, an understanding of how the, uh, the controller works uh, in terms of location and also tagging.